you're going to go out and you're going to go, hey, I want to If we were going to go duplex. buy an existing duplex versus build one. If you're going to buy the land too, right? You've got to factor yeah. that in. Um, we prefer to do brand new because you know what you got. So as far as, as, far as your maintenance schedules um, and repairs, that type of stuff, yeah. you're really not going to have much of anything at all. Yeah. You go buy an existing duplex that's 10 or 15 years. I just had the same conversation with some first time home buyers. They were looking at a house that was built in 97 versus one that's brand new. Uh, so if, you know, if you take a look at it over time, you know, income property is all about the income you're going to get minus income minus expenses is net, uh, you know, cash flow. It's going to be a little bit more expensive. Because you got you got to secure land and you got to build, and usually you know for duplexes they probably command what fifteen to seventeen hundred a month. You're looking at three hundred thousand. That's what how many square feet a piece? Uh, Twelve hundred something like that per side. You got a breezeway sometimes. Some you're you're building breezeways in between. The land you're looking at probably at least a couple acres, maybe an acre to get it on there. And make it look that probably an acre. City water, city sewer. We like city water. We like city sewer. They love that stuff. It's almost like the land or any of these deals. They'll probably reduce 25% down if it's city water, city land, or city water, city sewer. I actually had a conversation with that underwriter saying, okay, with land deals on any of this stuff with your building investment, what do you like? What do you like about land? What what can we do to make this a little more be more aggressive on our down payment? He's like, well, city water, city land, less than five acres. Love that stuff. That's what they want. City water, city sewer, and less than five acres. You probably get them down to 20% on just a land loan, conventional, and they're kind of varying off the path a little bit. But that's something else that we're trying this another example of you're going okay what do we like to see that's what we like to see so it's going to cost you a little bit more so 300,000 to build you're probably looking at what 200 to buy the land 100 to 150 just depending mm -hmm. on where you're at next just say 100 yeah, yeah. so now you're at 100,000 so 400,000 dollars we factor in your closing costs and your cost of acquisition for something like that let's just say 10 so you're at 450 cost to construct and that's you know twenty five percent down whatever that number is times it by 0.75, and that's your loan amount. There's your down payment. So it's a little bit more expensive, but it's something that we'll do. We'll factor and is it. Is this is this a, a a one step or a two step? It's one step. Just again, real construction loan. And then so explain to them what that means. Do you guys keep yeah. it in house, or would they have to refi it afterwards? The one step loan, a lot of construction loans are different. Our construction loan, well, we keep everything, mind you. That's why we can, why we're able to do some of these unique things because we're, we're keeping everything we do. Is you lock in your rate before construction starts. You, you pay your closing costs before construction starts. And then once you have 12 months to construct, after you're done constructing that house, it converts over, you get a final occupancy permit, you get your, your uh, 442 certification. The 442 certification is like a second appraisal where the appraisal comes back out after he's, he went out the first time, looked at the plans, cost breakdown, looked at the land, looked at this, what the house is going to be, he looks at his comps, comes up with the number, goes back out when it's all said and done, and goes, yep, this is how much it's worth. This makes sense. It's built to what it was supposed to be. Then you close the loan, it just rolls right in. There's no repull the credit, no recheck on your financials. You go buy three beavers, we're not going to worry about it, we're not going to know, unless you drive up. <laughs> I, said, I still won't be able to say anything or do anything. So then you convert the loan rolls right in, and there you go, you're on a P&I. Those 12 months of construction period, you have interest-only payments. So you would go get a guy like Mike to do it, see? So that's kind of what we like to do. Or if you are someone who works in the field or got the experience, you want to do it yourself, do an owner-builder investment construction, we do those too. It's a little bit more expensive on the origination fee. Instead of 2%, we're going to charge 2 half. So... And so the thing to understand is there, there's, there's other construction products that, that do this, but it's going to be one set of fees for the construction loan, and then you're going to have to refi out of it because they're simply doing a construction loan. And like Dennis was saying, WAFED, they like to do the loan and then keep it. Yeah. So there, there's this one. You pay a little bit higher uh, percentage up front, but also you got to consider how long you're going to sell this or keep this for too. So what I mean is if this goes back to your goals, your criteria, what specifically your plan is, these fees will cost you a certain amount of time for this second fee to make up for that, even if the interest rate is different. 
So your question that you have to consider almost every time you're doing something like this is, how long am I going to hold this? Okay, that, that's what makes sense on whether you need to do a one step or a two step. Uh, and the second thing is, well, who's actually gonna, who's gonna approve me uh, for this too? And then who's my builder for, for this particular one? What else do you guys have? Um, that the the yeah. below the value and the, is it, is it um, higher for um, preferred builders? Like the before deals here with you guys? Does that change? Um, possibly. I mean, I haven't done a, I haven't done like five or six with one guy before. Okay. So, you know, if, if we were doing that, I think there's a conversation to be had. I mean, I know sure. you like Mike a lot and what the stuff he's done. And there's so a, you can do 20%? Is that you know, I don't know, possibly. we got to do a few of them to kind of get it going. But I mean, you know, they like him. He's got a good relationship with people downtown. That's some of the stuff I can't say on, especially on camera. Like, yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> So basically, theirs you have to really consider because they're keeping it uh, and not reselling it. This is very much a situational basis. Yeah. Present the package, Dennis takes it to the underwriter, and it's, I mean, you're not, hey, if I told you no, would you, would you be upset? 